Hi everybody, I am that nursing prof and welcome to my channel. In today's video, we're going to be discussing magnesium sulfate. Now this is one of those medications that can be used in a variety of settings for different reasons. It can be used in a med surge setting or an assisted living setting, in a PO for like GI issues. But today we're specifically going to be talking about IV magnesium sulfate in OB, in labor and delivery. If you saw my video on preeclampsia and eclampsia, I mentioned magnesium sulfate and I said it's kind of involved, it's kind of a big topic, so I wanted to make its own separate video. And so that's what this is. This is the video for that. So let's jump into it. So what is it? Why are we using it? It is a CNS depressant. So remember our preeclamptic patients, right? They have lots of neurotransmitters going and firing all at the same time, right? They're at high risk for seizures. So we want those to calm down, right? So we want to give a med that's going to make them calm down. And that's what this does. The way it works, is it decreases the amount of acetylcholine, which then decreases that neuromuscular transmission. So it causes everything to kind of relax, okay? Tells that nervous system to chill out, because that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to prevent the seizures. In labor, we give it for two reasons. The big one would be the preeclampsia, but another reason we could possibly give it is for preterm labor. So depending on what we're giving it for, the preterm labor or the preeclampsia, we're going to give different dosages. So the loading dose for preterm labor is between 4 to 6 grams in 100 mLs, and then this is given over about 20 minutes. And then the maintenance dose is going to be anywhere between 1 to 4 grams per hour. So that's going to be kind of dependent on the patient. When it comes to preeclampsia, our loading dose is much higher, right? So six grams given over 20 minutes. And then our maintenance dose is gonna be roughly two grams an hour. Sometimes it'll be one to two grams an hour, but two is pretty standard. It kind of depends on mom, but most people it's gonna be that two grams. Lots of side effects from magnesium sulfate. It's a great med, it does what it's supposed to do, but everybody who takes it feels like garbage, okay? You're probably not going to be up and talking and eating your lunch and being normal when you're on this medication. You will feel terrible. Everybody does. So side effects, the scary ones, right? We want to monitor the respirations because this can cause everything to relax just a little too much, right? Including your diaphragm. And so you're not breathing at a normal healthy rate. So we want to check that out. This can cause nausea, vomiting. It can cause headaches. Your patient could have an altered level of consciousness, be confused, they'll be drowsy, sweaty, and possibly flushing. Just generalize, they just look uncomfortable, okay? They look miserable to be on this medication. But within about a half an hour of discontinuing it, when it's okay to get them off of it, they're going to be up and walking around and smiling and happy like it didn't even affect them. Like that's how quick it leaves the body. So that's a good thing, right? But when they're on it, they just feel junky. They just feel terrible. The therapeutic level of magnesium sulfate is anywhere between 4.8 to 9.6. If it is above that level, then you are at risk for magnesium sulfate toxicity. This is very dangerous. This could kill you. So we have to do very thorough assessments on our patients to make sure that doesn't happen. And the way you can remember some signs of toxicity is burp, which is, you know, crude, but it's a way you can remember. So B is for blood pressure. It will be decreased. U is for urine output, also decreased, so less than 30 ml per hour. R is your respirations will be decreased. And again, we have noticed that on the side effects, right? That's something we're looking out for. But now we're starting to think like they're really low, like less than 10, less than eight, okay? So dangerously low. And then P is for your patellar reflex will be absent. So people who are on magnesium sulfate, people who have preeclampsia, they're going to have their deep tendon reflexes checked, right? So you're gonna use your little reflex hammer on them. So the patellar reflex, that's the one on the knee, right, that we do and then you kick their knee. So when we go to do this on our patients, they're not going to be able to respond, okay? It's going to be absent. So these would be all signs of toxicity. And of course, we're going to draw a mag level. We're not going to just go off these signs. We're going to actually have some laboratory data to back us up to show that it's not in this therapeutic range. 
And then the other big thing I wanted to point out before we move on to our nursing considerations is the antidote. So if it's not in our therapeutic range, if there is toxicity, there is an antidote that we can give and it'll be part of the standard order set for the doctors. So if they order magnesium sulfate, they're automatically gonna order calcium gluconate, which is the antidote. Now let's jump into our nursing interventions. Now let's talk nursing interventions. So what are you gonna do when caring for a patient on magnesium sulfate? You're gonna do a lot of monitoring and assessing. So monitoring their vital signs, specifically watching that respiratory rate and their blood pressure. We're gonna draw mag levels per order. So that's gonna vary on the doctor and how much they're getting. Some people will have you draw mag levels every shift, every 12 hours, every 24 hours. It kind of depends. Monitor baby. So this is a medication that does cross the placenta. So think about that. It's having all those uncomfortable, annoying side effects for mom. It's also gonna affect baby. It affects uh, mom's respiratory rate. It's gonna affect babies too, right? So depending on when baby's born or you know, how soon they get put on this mag, uh, it's gonna depend how you know, baby responds to it. So monitoring baby's heart rate, seeing how they're handling it, are they handling it well or not. When we do our head to toe, of course we're gonna do a thorough head to toe, but special consideration to our deep tendon reflexes and our level of consciousness on these patients. Worst case scenario, you walk into the, the room and they have low respirations, you can't wake them up, they're unarousable, and they're even drooling. That would be really bad, okay? That would be emergency, and we don't want that to happen. And then just one little note I wanted to make is, depending on whenever they get put on it, if they're put on it for preterm labor on, they're on it for a really long time, or if they're on it like right before delivery, Either way, they're usually going to stay on it for about 24 hours, sometimes 48 hours postpartum. So they're still going to have all those terrible side effects and be uncomfortable, um, and also now they have to take care of a brand new baby, right? So monitoring these women and helping them, lots of teaching, lots of you know, nursing care for mom and baby postpartum. And I also wanted to point out who should not get magnesium sulfate. So who are the people that have contraindications? People who have renal disease, so poor kidney function. Why? Because they can't excrete it from the body fast enough and they're at higher risk for mag toxicity. People who have heart disease. And then people who have something called myasthenia gravis. So these people should not be able to get magnesium sulfate that would not be safe. The final thing I wanted to do is address a couple of math questions related to magnesium sulfate just because it is such a dangerous medication and we do give it through continuous IV drip, we want to make sure that our calculations are correct because that's what's safe. So let's do a couple of practice ones. So we have 30 grams magnesium sulfate in 500 mLs of lactated ringers. That's another random fact about magnesium sulfate is that it is given in lactated ringers, not normal saline. We are to give four grams per hour so how many mLs per hour will we set the pump? So in our answer, we want to have mLs over hours. So in our equation, we need to have mLs in our numerator. So where do we have mLs in our question? Right here. 500 mLs is the same as 30 grams. And then we want to give 4 grams per hour So our grams will cancel, we'll end up with mLs on top and our hours on the bottom. Punch it into your calculator and we get 67. So that's what we're going to set our pump to, 67. Let's do one more. We have 40 grams mag sulfate in 500 mLs LR. We are to give 1 gram per hour. How many mLs per hour will we set the pump? So we'll have mLs over hours in our answer. So we're going to have mLs up here again, and this is going to be our 500 and our 40. So 500 mLs over 40 grams. And then we are to give 1 gram per hour. So then the grams will cancel. We'll end up with mLs over hours. Do the math, and it's 12. 
Now, are we going to set the pump to 12.5? No, we're going to round it. So I just wanted to add a little bit of math in here just because, you know, it's a good refresher and this is a really important medication that we can't, you know, mess up. We need to make sure that we're doing it safely and giving the right doses. So that was my video on magnesium sulfate. Don't forget to like and subscribe. If you have any questions or comments, please let me know. And if not, I'll see you on the next one.